Welcome to my how-to video on how you can be a big-time extra in small-town Texas, which is another way of saying this is how to become that person you see briefly way in the back of the scene of a movie or TV show without any lines right here in the beautiful, vibrant, growing town of Georgetown, Texas. We're here on the town square where they have been shooting some exterior courthouse scenes for a TV movie the last few days. I'm going to share with you my first-time experience of being a, quote, background artist, unquote. If you follow these seven easy steps, I think you could do it too. The first thing you have to do is probably obvious. Sign up. That means find a casting agency to register with. In my case, they had an article in the local paper with filming dates and an email where you could send some basic information like height, weight, clothes size, and work availability. In addition, you'll have to supply a well-lit headshot from the shoulders up, and probably a full-length photo. This didn't have to be anything fancy. If you have a spouse or a friend with a cell phone camera, you'll be good to go. If you do a Google search for casting agencies, you'll probably find plenty to choose from. Assuming that you get your golden ticket to be on a movie or show, you will need to get on the payroll. So you'll have to fill out additional paperwork online and complete an I-9 form to verify employment eligibility which requires you to supply social security and driver's license or ID info. Next, follow directions. You will get a ton of emails, especially during the filming. Read them thoroughly soon after you get them. Sometimes they want you to reply with a confirmation. During these crazy pandemic times, they may have lots of extra health and safety rules about masking and frequent COVID testing. Nearly everything requires specific appointments in varying locations. Read and listen carefully. They often want things done in a certain order. They may want you to do COVID testing in this tent, initial check-in at that tent, go get your wardrobe in another tent, make up in a certain trailer, and end up at the hair trailer. You can't skip any because a crew member has to check you off at each step. On a filming day, they may want one group to head to the location set now, and another group to be ready in five minutes. Just follow the rules and directions and you should be fine. The third step is important. Meet your commitments. In other words, if you say you're available to work on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, make sure you show up. Also, the call times to be at their designated base camp may be incredibly early, like 4.15 a.m. And the days could be very long. My first day was about 14 hours, and more than eight hours is typical. At least we got paid time and a half after eight hours. More about compensation at the end of the video. If something happens that keeps you from meeting your commitment, let the crew know with as much advance notice as possible. There does seem to be a bit of an unspoken threat that if you don't show up on time and follow the rules, this could jeopardize getting future work. Another commitment may be the way you look. If your background character has a full beard or longer sideburns, you better start growing them now. Of course, the hair and makeup artists can do amazing things. You also have to commit to whatever clothes they give you in wardrobe. I overheard one lady saying she had never worn high heels before, so you might want to borrow some and practice. Number four is be patient and be prepared. There are so many lines to stand in when you're waiting for wardrobe costumes, COVID testing, getting hair and makeup done, checking in or checking out, getting props, getting lunch or snacks, getting on a transport bus. Well, you get the idea. In addition to the lines, there's a lot of just sitting around in a holding area waiting for your scene. I had a day where I waited more than six hours in holding. Some people bring a book or played games on their phone. Just try to keep calm, even after a 14-hour day and you just want to head to the house. But being prepared is another way to say, take care of yourself. Bring a water bottle, jacket, gloves, extra layers or warm slippers if the weather is cold or wet. We had several days with below freezing weather, so the crew runs around like crazy picking up personal jackets and blankets right before the camera starts rolling and then redistribute them after they yell, cut! Also, 
when you talk about prepared, I even saw a lady with an electric blanket in the holding area. Many people bring a small backpack to keep all their stuff in. The crew will also emphasize that you need to let them know if you're having a problem or need to take a break. They want you to be safe and to keep coming back for the entire schedule. The fifth step is be friendly. As I mentioned, there is a lot of sitting or standing around and you will also be paired with different people throughout the day for different scenes. Introduce yourself and you'll probably find that you have something in common. Even when you get paired with cast members who have actual lines, you will find that they are very nice and want the whole experience to be fun for everyone. One of the biggest surprises for me was the sense of community among the extras. The vast majority of the people I met do this a lot. That means that they may have been working with this show from the very start for more than six months. They've traveled to more than a half a dozen small Texas towns, and you will see the same people over and over. In fact, some of the people will work on a different show in a different location when they have a day off from working the two weeks on this show's location. In some cases, the second team director or the assistant to the directors will even know the names of some of the extras and will call for them to do a certain scene. So it can pay off to be friendly. And you probably won't want to do this unless you're having fun. The next to last step is remember and repeat. You'll be assigned a role. In my case, one day I was a courthouse reporter with a handheld microphone and another day, I was a camera utility person holding a boom microphone with a big VHS recorder and neck strap. Remember your role and be creative with your actions. It's not exactly acting, but it is acting-ish, since you're in the background behind the main action or placed somewhere in the foreground. The person providing direction that day will tell you where to stand and what to do. Generally, you'll pretend to talk in pantomime to minimize the background noise while the main actors are delivering their lines. You can mouth words like rhubarb, rhubarb, or peas and carrots to imitate talking. Then they will shout background action to start your movement and cut when they want you to stop while they reset. Next, you need to remember where you were standing and what you were doing because they may reshoot different takes of the same scene. And then do it all again from three or four different camera angles. This repetition of movement is initiated by the assistant director yelling, back to your ones, which means go back to the exact spot where you were for the first shot and get ready to do the same movements again. So you will need to remember your role, remember your actions, and be ready to repeat over and over and over. Finally, will this be your path to fame and riches? Probably not. But I met plenty of people who were doing this as their only job. I was clearing about $13.25 per hour after payroll deductions, and you got time and a half after eight hours. However, there was definitely a range of salaries. Some spectator or pedestrian roles were only starting at $10 per hour, and I'm sure extras in other parts of the country got paid even more than I did. With a 12-hour day being fairly typical, the pay can add up pretty quickly with the overtime. 
I did hear of some cases where the production company even put extras up in a hotel room for the night if it was in a distant location with an early morning start. Oh, and the free catering. I'm sure it varies from production to production, but we had fixings for breakfast tacos in the morning, multiple entree selections at lunch or dinner, and way too many snacks and beverages available all day long. So this may not be the life for everyone, but it can be fun. If you happen to live somewhere where they are shooting several TV shows or movies, you may have more work than you can schedule. However, you can also do this for a couple of weeks and then take a break. As for the fame part, you will probably get to see some famous stars or directors and literally rub shoulders in some crowded scenes. But as with many things in life, it takes a lot of luck, timing, and who you know to really make it big. Or to at least make it into the credits at the end of the show.